How's it going everybody? My name is Jim and welcome to Restoration Projects. I have these three drill presses here at the shop and I want to do kind of a comparison video if you're in the market for a drill press on what to look for and what features might be important to you. So we'll start off here to the left. This is a probably 1950s home craft. This I believe is an 11 inch uh, drill press and it's powered by a one third horsepower motor. And as you can see, it's a little smaller tabletop mount. It still comes with the retirement light, has the bracket to mount that on from the factory. And this is actually what got me started doing uh, restorations, is a, it was a Walker Turner tabletop mount drill press, and I completely tore it down, rebuilt it, and that's when I started getting into this a lot more heavily, I started this YouTube channel. So this is kind of my gateway drug into the world of tool restoration. So if you're looking for a little drill press, if you don't have large objects that you're trying to drill into, um, these pop up on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist all the time. And this is an awesome first restoration, first restoration project and a just a great little drill press. The fit and finish on these is very good. Um, this has a lot of the same features as its bigger brother here. Um, there are a lot of similarities here. Quill size, relatively the same. They're not interchangeable quills, but they are very similar in size and design. Um, they kept a lot of the same designs off this one into this one. So this, these ones pop up on Craigslist, at least here in the Pacific Northwest, for around the $100 price point pretty regularly. Uh, the next option here, this is a 14 inch drill press and the 14 inch means that there's a 7 inch space from the center of the drill here to the back of the column. So you could have a 14 inch diameter circle and you could drill right in the center of it. <clears throat> this being a 14 inch drill press, um, this is pretty common, this is a 1947. Uh, this was one of Delta's more common drill presses and as you can see it has this foot feed right there. And this is by far my favorite feature of a drill press is having the ability to control the spindle with their foot. So I can have both hands here step on this foot feed and drop the spindle down. The way it works is it just a metal bar right there that comes down and it has these two little fingers, try not to shake the camera too much, that come down and they just pull on this bottom cool guard right there. Uh, the 14 inch drill presses, if you can find these, especially with the foot feed, um, they're not cheap. Uh, prices vary, but a couple hundred dollars. And, some, and it's just like anything, the more features you get on them, the more expensive they're gonna be. If you look on eBay right now, this belt guard right here, the back part, that's anywhere in a $300 mark right there. So the accessories do drive up the price quite a bit. These retirement lights here, they're roughly $100 too. So um, these things can get spendy, but as the old adage goes, buy once, cry once. Um, this is my personal drill press that I use all the time, and it's kind of my favorite. I'm not, I don't see myself getting rid of it. Uh, swing around the back here. So both of these drill presses, I believe this is this is a one-third horsepower motor, and this is also a one-third horsepower motor. Delta was very famous for underrating what their motor performance were. So if they say one-third horsepower, it's more like a half horsepower. If they say half horsepower, probably a three-quarter horsepower. So if you see one of these smaller motors on these older machines, just realize that they uh, under promised and over delivered was the idea with them. Now moving on to here, this right here is a 2007 and this I believe is a 15 inch, let me look at the documentation here really quick, sorry, this is a 17 inch drill press and in 2007 Delta did outsource some of their manufacturing over to China and Taiwan. This one was made in China and I think up until very recently they were still making the Unisaw here locally, but they've unfortunately had to outsource. It's just due to cost. Um, and that's kind of a shame because uh, the quality has suffered. So 
There are a lot of neat features that this drill press has that these older ones don't. Um, such thing as like a quick change um, depth stop here versus where I have to manually turn this down. Um, they did come with laser guides, so you could hit the switch right here and it would shine two lasers down onto whatever you're working on. Uh, that feature is no longer on this. It would just mount on the column right here. Um, also, this drill press has a lot more speeds compared to the other ones. The older ones I just showed you, they had four speeds. I believe this is a 16 speed. And a cool feature that I do like is you loosen up these two screws here and the motor will pull forward, allowing you to adjust the belts quickly without needing a wrench to adjust them. So when I say quality suffers with these newer drill presses or the ones that are made overseas, um, specifically the things that I have noticed is the castings. So this casting is a lot more porous here and on the table than these castings are. I would compare this to say a stone, a, a pumice stone, and I would compare this to granite. And the way I, I make that comparison is this feels porous to me. So a lot of these newer castings that I've come through my shop that I've repaired, um, the holes will strip out right here where they tap these holes in. And I have to re-drill and go a uh, size up to tap them and the casting just falls apart in your hand. Castings are naturally brittle, but it is exceptionally brittle with these newer castings. I don't know what they do with the ingredients or why that is. Um, I don't know how to answer that in this video. I'm not an expert on castings, but when you hear people say that the stuff is, as made as, is not made as good as it used to be, that's generally what they're talking about, is um, stuff just stripping out easier. Uh, same thing here, I had to replace the um, gear in here that increases and decreases the table height by, there's a worm gear that uh, spins another gear that travels up and down here. And that had wore out, it was just a softer piece of metal. So the manufacturing process of these are generally, they go with a cheaper option and that causes failure 10, 20 years down the road. And that's what gives a lot of the overseas stuff a bad reputation. I will also make the argument that there are some things that are made overseas that are very good. I have the saw stop, saw stop table saw and I am extremely happy with the fit and finish on it. It's made in Taiwan and it does, it, it is very well built and the castings are a lot better than some of the cheaper stuff that you see right here. So hopefully this uh, answers some of your questions about drill presses and what you're looking for when you're going to buy one. Um, if you do like the increased table space, like this one, you have the T-nuts you can bolt stuff down to. It's a nice feature. If you get one of these floor models, you can put a piece of wood up here, a piece of plywood to increase your table space. And same thing with this, uh, these smaller ones. Price, it varies where you are in the country and where you are in the world. but given that this is a restoration channel and I, I'm geared toward older machinery, obviously I'm biased and I would go for something older because I find that the parts are easier to find, they're easier to work on, and they just last longer. Um, even though this home craft was geared toward the consumer, not necessarily a commercial grade one, it still, I would argue, is better grade casting and just better fit and finish than a newer one that you could argue would be geared toward a commercial shop. So hopefully you guys got something out of this video. If you did, please smash that subscribe button and thank you guys for watching.